Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. You want to see one guy, one ATV, and a sack of cubes move a herd of bison a half a mile in about 10 minutes? You're in the right place. Hope you enjoy today's video. What up? Good girl. Come on. Got the two hired hands with. And the most important, some cubes. <laughs> you guys ready? What do you know, big dog? What do you know, big boy? All right. I got to push you through there, so. So I've got some cues for you. You guys ready to run or what? Huh, big fella? Hey, buddy. Here we go right here. It is almost breeding season. And so what we're going to do today, kind of some excitement about breeding season. We're going to move the entire Big Joe herd all the way to the hay meadow. We've got a long ways to go. The front of our property all the way to the back essentially this hay meadow has only been grazed once this year for about a month and a half with our calves which are now yearlings and they're brought up here to the front marissa and i got them all the way up here so now it's time to go through pasture one pasture three little nine acres through the 80 acre burn unit and into the hay meadow it's a beautiful pasture one of my favorite places at the ponderosa big joe are you ready he should be rocking and rolling here pretty soon. Breeding season is knocking on the door if it already hadn't started yet. So here it is. Stop talking. Let's get an ATV. Drones going up. GoPros in the back. We're headed to the hay meadow. Okay, so far so good. We uh, got them out of pasture two, a 20 acre pasture, and uh, they're on a roll right now. We're rolling into pasture three, which is a 40 acre unit. So we've gotten into a bigger pasture here and they're doing pretty good. This is a long stretch basically here. And then now looks like we're getting the whole group still on the move. As long as we can keep some momentum, it's a good thing.
Next, we're gonna, we have to stop here at the nine acres. I gotta open up this gate, roll into the nine acres. This small pasture has had a lot of rest times. So there's a lot of good forage in this nine acres right now. Once we get out of the nine acres, if I can keep them rolling, we've gotta stop again. I'm gonna let them regroup here at this next gate that we're gonna leave the nine acres and we're gonna roll into the burn unit. Now this is where it's gonna get really interesting is that the burn unit, it's rested for a couple months now. It's one of their favorite places. It's one of their biggest grazing units. This pasture is only grazed twice a year. Here at this gate, hopefully we can keep their attention. And then once we get into the 80 acre burn unit, we've gotta cut through the middle of it. We gotta go through a creek crossing. And this is where our challenges usually are is whenever you go through the creek um, it can slow them down a little bit because there's a lot of grass in this 80 acres and so when we get to this burn unit and go through this creek crossing that's where when I get on the other side of the creek I'm gonna have to really slow down get their attention with the cubes pour some out and we're gonna try to get them through it if I can get them to follow me all the way to the next gate, which is the hay meadow, we've got it made. Hopefully we can do it. Hope you guys are enjoying the journey so far. All right, so we've crossed the creek. We're waiting on the other side. This is where I knew it could get pretty interesting. We're gonna hold up here a second. <laughs> They're used to that sound, so I've just been using it for years and it's worked so far. All right, looks like we got a couple here. We got a mom and a calf coming up here, crossing the creek, that's a good sign. We can get a couple more of these lead cows, it'll be good. I'm just gonna hold up here, give them just a second to regroup, to see me. I'm gonna drop a couple cubes for them. They keep smelling these cubes, they taste good. And then we're gonna see if we can extend this a little more. We're gonna keep going. If we can get them all to cross the creek, They'll just follow each other. That's what's great about the bison is they're a herd animal. They want to be together. So if there's a couple in the front that are going to lead, the rest will typically follow. Now, we've got to go through several acres of this burn unit. They know something's up and they can tell. They know from the beginning of this, when I'm making that sound and pulling them with the ATV, they know that something's up because they're used to this ATV, they're used to this process, and they've been through it before. They know that there's good things happening 
on the other side of this. Wherever we stop, they know something good is happening. So here's our last big stretch before we get to the hay meadow. Once we get to the gate, they're gonna probably, we're gonna let them regather again. They're gonna graze some grass. I'm gonna get this gate open, pull in here, and we'll see if they'll follow us. Here's our bread and butter. This is where we want to get them. Come on! Woo! Come on! I got you right in here. Peaches will go for it. Her and her baby. They pull in here and they should follow. Peaches is the first one which is a great lead cow. Peaches is the one of our foundation herd females. She always helps me through a lot of these moves. So thank you, Peaches, for getting them in, and they're all going to funnel in. Man, this is so much fun. I love this. is one of my favorite things to do. I'm gonna go back and do a check to see who is not made it yet. See, we've got a straggler here. The man himself. Come on, Big Joe. We're waiting on you. Everybody's in here but you. Just throwing some cues, let them know I'm proud of them. This is so awesome. This is, uh, I have to be honest with you here, uh, this is kind of a proud moment here uh, because, um, I better get a little close to the ATV, but I, uh, I'm just, I'm super proud of them. Guys, that is a long ways to go through a lot of grass. The nine acres hadn't been grazed in two or three weeks. The burning unit hasn't been grazed in over a month and a half uh, since we took them off back in May and early, early June. And uh, the last group that was in here was Dunbar and Haas and the South Dakota and the Wolverine female. So uh, I'm just proud of how far they came. It's a long ways to go from the front of the property to the very far back of the property. Now we've got to do a little count here um, on this, on our herd and make sure they all made it through. But you can see like Big Joe stopping, getting some of that grass in the burn unit. So just proud uh, that they will follow me in the ATV. 
it's you can see how much time Marissa and I spend with them and uh, they get used to that and then they come out here and you want them to move for you you get them to move a half a mile just by using some cubes and recognizing the ATV being continuous and repetitive with that keeping everything normal and just yelling at them to come uh, the same calls that we get them to move and uh, just proud of them and they're happy hunky dory here this is peaches a lot of grass in here so they're going to be in here this is going to be an intense grazing for um uh probably at least a week this is about 18 acres uh, we've got 26 is what we should have in here and uh now that the herd is a little bit smaller we're gonna this is gonna be a intense style grazing um where you get a lot of hoofs you get a lot of poop you get a lot of pee uh, and you get a lot of grazing in a short amount of time and then we're moving this herd right over here into the burn unit and uh, This pasture the hay meadow will go into recovery mode and they'll be out on the uh, burn unit, which is 80 acres and uh, We've got some fence work to do over there, but I Wanted to show y'all this take a look here. I was doing a little fence checking our perimeter fence and uh, we have a new little outcrop of, does anybody know what this plant is? Yes, I know how to identify it. You can take a picture of it, swipe up, and it'll tell you. But I already know what this is because I've seen it for a long time, what this plant is. But So this is kind of an area where it kind of holds a lot of water right here in this area as it comes off this hill and comes down in this corner here of our land so that is part of the burn unit this is my neighbors but if you guys don't know what this is this is a persimmon tree we have a kind of an explosion of persimmons here which i love persimmons it's great for wildlife uh the raccoons love them you know but the raccoons but um great for wildlife deer pigs love them i know we don't encourage two of those animals uh but that's part of life here where we are but definitely the deer so what i wanted to do for a long time is if i could ever find a company to make it for us i want to do like a a a type of jerky bar or a meat bar with bison in it of course uh mixed in with a native or natural um, fruit of some sort. And the first one I thought of was this plant right here. So the natives called this pemmican. It's kind of like a um, jerky or some fat uh, from an animal, probably a deer or elk, and then mixed in with a fruit. It was kind of a uh, granola bar essentially in the prehistoric times of uh, the Native Americans. And they would make this little packed meat bar a uh, little granola essentially with uh, some fruits and some fat and if you know what pemmican is then you know what I'm talking about my idea is I'd love to create a bar that has persimmon in it with bison meat I think it'd be fabulous it's hard to find somebody to do that but if you could take the persimmons straight from your property and put them into mix them with our bison meat I think it'd be fabulous. You guys let me know what you think. Especially if you know what I'm talking about here on uh, persimmons, these persimmon trees. I think these persimmon would be really cool to make that uh, bar of some sort. So, a lot of persimmons. Now, I don't know how to control them because we don't spray necessarily. There's some just sporadic in here. These are quite tall. They're just from last year. So, I know a way to handle them. That would be... Uh, goats goats would be perfect for something like this the bison are going to graze the grass which is what they want and then the goats would come through and eat all the forbs the shrubby uh vegetation is what they'd go after right the bison are going to take the grass the goats are going to go after the uh forbs type of plants a lot of good grass out here though this is a a good spot
What's up, Big Joe? Thanks for being with me today, girl. You like running, don't you? All right, let's go, Jackie. So I always talk about the hay meadow, and there's a reason why we call it that. It's because when we first got this property, it was a hay meadow and uh, full of native grass. And our first year, we, we had it sprayed, and uh, we also got hay off of it and since Marissa and I started diving into regenerative ag and trying to look at the holistic approach of raising the American bison uh, changed our mindset we started working with local companies like Oaks and Prairie's Joint Venture uh, American Bird Conservancy LAWA the NRCS USDA started working with all those programs and you know they said why why cut and take off all the nutrients off of your property and and rob it why not let the bison graze on it do their thing do the adaptive grazing on it do some intense grazing and then move them and rotate them to some more and i was like yeah it's more grazing ground and i don't have to feed as much hay so what we did is we started buying hay from our neighbors, literally. Uh, here in about a couple of weeks, they'll be cutting hay uh, around us, and it's going to be a lot of native grass, which is what the bison want. It's this grass, essentially, it's little blue stem, big blue stem. Uh, Indian grass will be up. Uh, it probably already is up. Uh, we don't have very much switch grass. Uh, we have a touch of eastern gama grass. And then we have, uh, we just have some of those native grasses, um, side oats grama, that the bison love. And that's what they want. That's what they've been grazing for years all over the Great Plains. Well, you can take it off of somebody else's property who's not raising cattle and doesn't do anything with it. And so, and turn it into hay for us, which is what they want. And we can feed it over winter, um, of course. So that's why we don't cut hay on this hay meadow anymore. We graze it. And it's perfect. They love it. They're happy out here. This good grass that will hopefully have some good protein in it will get these mamas uh, in heat mode and ready for pregnancy. And Big Joe's got a lot of work to do since that hoss is not here. Um, and it's going to benefit us and make this whole thing so much better for those guys, for the birds, the insects, the butterflies, the wildlife, everything just by taking some animals out and get into a stable stocking rate, which is where we need to be. Hey, girl. Hey, Eleanor. Get you some cubes. Save you some cubes, girl. Oh, Eleanor. Good to see you, girl.